And the apostles quickly answered, they were 12. Go bastards. Now listen to me. Brothers and sisters, when the Lord would bless a brother, would bless a sister, would bless a person, he seemed to it that there always is an extra. Amen? Now we can become, the extra can become a blessing to others. The Lord would want to bless you and me that we become a blessing to others. Everybody says praise the Lord. Let's give him a cup of praise for that. A few weeks later, that repeated again. There was enough food again, enough to feed uh, some some crowd. The Bible said seven thousand, and the Lord repeated back the first miracle, and He asked the second question. We not perform the miracle for the bread. Seven thousand hungry men. There, how much excess left? And uh, the apostles just starting to shake because Jesus now a little a little a little offended or his voice turned stainful. Uh, Lord, there were seven baskets. Then I want you to know this, the last verse, it says, and the seven for four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said, to him seven. And he said to them, do you not yet understand? In other words, it was the third experience where they were going to a place maybe it wasn't a crowd maybe not not too many as like the five thousand and the seven thousand now this at this one at this at this moment it was just jesus and the twelve and many their families like for example peter when they they were on a travel peter would, would leave you know his wife and his children the Bible even, you know, implied that when Peter would go together with Jesus to minister, he would bring sometimes his mother-in-law. Remember, the setting of the Bible is Asia. Israel is in South, rather, Israel is in the Middle East. Israel is Asia, amen? There was this one commonality of personalities. You know, we Asians, when we are invited, oh, we go for a party. And you are invited personally, and you go and invite and bring the whole of your family and even your neighbors and your classmates and you have a good time. Well, Asia, Philippines, and Israel. Hello! Are you there? Are you there? Let's give him a clap of praise. Now, the third miracle. They were worried because they didn't have, they didn't have, they didn't have, uh, they didn't have yeast. But the Lord said, you worry all the time. You worry too much. Come on. The Lord said, I'm concerned of you. The Lord said, I'm your provider. The Lord told him, I never run out. Amen. Amen. Now listen to me, brothers and sisters. Three in the Bible, you know, the Bible has uh, numerology. The study of numbers. One is unity. Two is uh, submission. One. Three is trinity. And three at the same time is limitless. Without limits. What is that? The instance when the Lord Jesus Christ was telling the truth about them. The first bread miracle. The second bread miracle. At least the third. He was as if telling the apostles telling everyone, telling the word, and he wants you to know. He wants you to understand right this very morning. All of us listen that his provision is without limits. Amen. Let's give God his gift. My question is, there how many there how many of us today are too worried? There how many of us already for some time are sleepless? There how many of us are too scared and are afraid already because we have so a lot of things that we don't know where to go, what to do. Now listen, maybe you have tried so much for a lot of things. Now try your God. Just, just for one time, just for one time. And you will see how the Lord is able and can to perform your desire and your prayer. Amen. Our God is alive. Our God is not dead. Our God is.
is real. That do not mean because we cannot and do not see him that he doesn't exist. Our faith in the Lord is not is not only a myth. You know the Greeks believed to their gods, and they were only myths proven in history. So were the Egyptians, so were the Romans. But throughout time, since time immemorial, day one in the Garden of Eden, those people who believe in El Shaddai, those people who believe, who believe the God Almighty, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, to the coming generations and even to our time, and every single one of them, including you and me, because we believe in Him and when we trust in Him, He never failed us not one time. Not a bit, not a time. Amen? Amen. For God is not like a man that He lies. What the Lord promises, He seems to it that He's able to perform, even to the last detail. Huh? Amen? Amen? Let's give Him a clap of praise. Come on. God's provision is without limits. Amen? I've been there. Well, I still have my giants. I still have my troubles. Now I'm sharing this to you because like me and like everyone else, God wanted us, you know, to stand on to our grounds. And He doesn't want us to succumb only to a defeat mentality. He doesn't want us to be passive. However, He wants us to put our faith into activation, appropriate to what He promised on in the Word of God. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the word for today is limitless. Amen? I like you to place your palm to your chest and say, limitless. Let's give him a loud praise. Every time when you see your wallet, and your wallet's resources are starting to deplete, remind yourself, because your tendency and my tendencies, we always forget. Talk to that wallet. Do you remember in the scripture, the Lord said, when you face before a mountain, point your finger and tell to the mountain, transfer to the other place. Now tell me, did it once, even in the gospel or whatever in the history to now, or even whoever prophets tried once to speak to a literal mountain like Kulung Matu and tell him, hey, transfer to. Uh, Santa Cruz, or the waters, the strait of Santa Cruz. No, they're not. Because it is allegorical. The mountains can be something. Now, in some instances, mountains can be a wallet. Ah, hello? The Lord says, talk to that wallet. And remind yourself, limitless. Now everybody yells and shouts, say, God is limitless in provision. The council team, we go, one, two, three. God is limitless in provision. Amen. Now turn to somebody, shake the brother, say, let's see to say, God's provision is limitless. Come on. Now, when we say provision, we right away associate them to money, well, to our food. But they are wisdom also. In my case, you already have family, I don't keep my age, I'm 41. I'm about to be 43. Ah, praise God. One of my goals is memory. Oh, no, 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 I, I still have a good memory, thank God, but the normal, I mean, when you go become not older but more mature, memory is a goal. I experienced them for almost more than a year in, in my colleagues. Especially when I memorize, wow, I memorize, memorize very easy. 30 minutes later, oh my god, we fought all everything down. Throughout them. Why? Because of the examinations? <laughs> what are those? Huh? You know, I, I, I would envy then my son because. You know, his memory is very short. And then one day, I feel the prayer. No, it's the other way now. God, please restore my memory back. The kind of memory I used to have 30 years ago, please. Give me the kind of memory my son now has. I'm talking about young again. Now, I slept. The following day was still an ordinary day. Because you know, when God visits, I mean God bless, 
they, they're not thunders. I, I tell you, hello, amen? When the Lord comes, when the Lord shows up, they're no athletes. There are no flowers. There are no legions of angels to blow the trumpets. When God comes, when God blesses, when He answers your, your prayer, they always are suave. They always are ordinary. And they always sometimes, or they always, or sometimes, are surprised. Amen? Yeah? They just feel it. They just, oh, come on, it's already in me. Long story short, it's now to be three, three weeks. I started to memorize, I said memorize them. Really very long sections and provisions on certain laws, not just one, but I have eight subjects today, and I'm on into four subjects on into a rigid memorization. And you know what? I'm here to brag. I'm here to boast. I'm here to brag and boast the name of Jesus. I'm here to brag and boast God Almighty. I tell you, His provision is without limits. Limitless. Amen? Let's give Him a lot of praise. It's also actually limit God in our lives. The students, others can do it, but me not. I'm already old. You limit it yourself. Yeah, others can be blessed, but me not. It's actually you limiting yourself, not God. Uh, God can I even give me a house? I'm already content with this one. Remember, I, I'd like us to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that God works according to the level of our faith. That's why, if there's another word again, I'd like us to understand is this. Break the roots you have. Spiritual roots you have, because those are limiting you, amen? Because God is always creative, like thank you, ladies and gentlemen, amen? God cannot run out of creativity. And His mercies are new every morning. Mercies of God are talking there about creativity, amen? Sometimes God appears as a color blue. Following day green, or the third day red, or rainbow, or I tell you, God is limited in His ways, amen? God sometimes appears at once, or He uses your enemy sometimes to meet your needs, and you surprise how did that happen? Or to some extent, God uses the devil himself to give up, or to vomit some things just to bless you, because God is limited, amen? Hallelujah, the cross was our, the cross was an artifice of the devil, Satan himself. He thought that he already quenched the fire, the, the zeal of God. Because the zeal of the Lord is Jesus. For the zeal of God the Father is Jesus. And Jesus there suspended between heaven and earth that his blood dropped drain to the lost. There was for three days an orgy and celebration deep down under. In Hades, Satan the thing that it was already the end. Yeah, it was the end. It was his end. Because God started a new covenant. It was called the covenant of grace. Before in the past, when you failed, you failed. The covenant of law now, when you fail, God giving you the grace for having a second day. And to make it, it not, cannot, on the second day, on the third and the fourth, there are no limits. Amen. Hello? Amen. Let's give God a cup of grace. Come on. to you today, huh? The word? Praise God. Praise God. Thus, today, what you may be going through, trust the Lord and never be ashamed to ask from Him. I'd like to say it again. Thus, today, what you may be going through, trust the Lord. It's the only key. Trust Him and never be ashamed to ask Him. Yet. Yeah. There are plenty of us hesitate to ask the Lord because we thought they're not spiritual. We thought the Lord cannot give them. Lord, please arrange my voice. It's not wrong. Please, my phone is already busted. Change it to one move. We spiritualize things. No, I'm content because the Bible said, we are to be content to what He allows, okay? You know, I'm content with this broken phone. I've been in this phone, using this phone for the last 25 years. 
this whole fifty one thing. So I will pray. And God performs and works according to our faith. Amen. Are you there? Amen. Amen. Now how about and nothing wrong and it's not wrong to come to God and pray, Lord, please. And don't apologize when you come to God. Come to in faith. Because the Bible told us when we pray, we must and come in the presence of God in faith, not apologetically. <laughs> come in faith, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. That you would bless me. Lord, I have this broken phone. Change it to one new. No, I, I want the iPhone 6. Come on, don't apologize. I mean, what well, are the with you? You see, we, we still are ashamed to God and say, Lord, I'm uncontent. Okay, iPhone, Apple. I go and I ask for an iPhone 4. I got the company, okay. Is that your faith for? Uh, is that your faith? You're not faith to come to me and just for an iPhone 4. Son, iPhone 6 is already about to be released in August. <laughs> I think. It's just for an example. A married women, I, I pray in the name of Jesus. A married women we have in the church, you can find one the best for you. God wants you to be happy and happily living, living happily ever after. Amen. God reserves you a one Prince Charming. No, no. Amen. Let's give God a love praise for that. And say, Lord, whoever, don't spiritualize or biblicalize. Lord, as she said, whomsoever believes, now whomsoever may come. But maybe, no. Start to pray. And I don't want my children to be involved here this time, Lord. So you're not here. But now I pray for them. Pray for each one of them. God to guide them, God to lay. God will lay a trail for the destiny. God will lay a trail for their life. This is how the Lord called us in the Bible. Parents would have to pray for their children. And I believe in what God provided in His Word. But listen to me, don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed when you come to God. Amen. Now, don't, don't get me wrong because, ladies and gentlemen, that's how the Word of God is saying. Is providing, you know, not not just a phone. You can, you can ask a lot of things. Lord, I'm already tired of their, of this life, living in lack, living being poor. There's nothing wrong in being poor, but I tell you, they're all they're all many blessings. They're all many benefits when you have more. Amen. Are you with me? You can do that the whole better when you have more. But when you do not have, you become limited. About your house. We don't have a house. We don't have a house. Maybe God, He wanted us to have this, or like this to be the kind forever. Now break the roof and say, Lord, I'm coming to you and asking you for a house. Lord, even just a nipa hut, and God can give you and will give you a nipa hut. What about, Lord, please ask you, well, don't ask for a palace if you cannot keep because God will say, oh, how would you ask for the palace? Because you see it on TV. After all, you cannot clean it. See your room. They, 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 they've been on a disarray for three years already. Ouch, ouch. So, see to it, you say, Lord, give me a house with a pool. See to it that you know how to sleep. Lord, please give me a car. See if you know how to drive. Hello. Amen. Amen. So practice. Lord, give me a bike, a motorcycle bike. See if you know how to, to, to drive the bike. Huh? Amen. Lord, give me patience. Extend my patience already yourself because God will allow so a lot of people to annoy you, to stretch more and more of your patience. Somebody be great. Lord, Please give me patience now. Hello, amen. Anyways, are you still there, amen? Yeah. Let's give God a couple of breaks. Here we go. I, I, I'd like to introduce two things to us before we go for our Holy Communion. 
Number one, God wants to give you the best. And let us place our palm to the chest and say that we can say, God wants to give me the best. Now listen, believe is capacity. I've been a driver for seven years. And those who know how to drive, you know what I'm saying. When you are in a car, on the driver's seat, Quijun and I are together for at least twice in a week, isn't it, Quijun? Yeah. I always have this sense and feeling when Quijun drives. But you know, I, 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 would, I would feel like me also pressing my, my left foot. My left, the left foot is for the brake. You know, I would press like seemingly like I'm almost breaking order. Sometimes when he slows down, I would also press my, my, my right. Because the right is for, oh no, the left is yeah, for the brake. The right is for the acceleration. And then, you know, because I'm at the driver's seat, if you are, uh, you know, if you're the passenger in the driver's seat, you cannot see the the, the balance and the, uh, the clearances to how the driver himself can see. You know, the proximity. That's why when you are in this side, when it runs, the, the car runs, you call it that, like it almost go like that. Actually, they are good clearance because of the proximity and the, what is this, the estimations. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, very funny because drivers, when they are passengers, they are helpless but will have to believe and place all of their faith in the driver. The one managing you. Hello! You with me? Yeah. And that's how I'm doing to create too many drives. I just place my help with the faith in him that, you know, we can really can go and reach to our destination and all, all well and in one piece. And that works the same and relative to our God Almighty. I tell you, the Lord is a good driver. The one who's in the wheel of your life, ladies and gentlemen, is always precise and he cannot fall into a ditch. Amen? Believe his capacity. Hello? I like I said, we want to say, believe his capacity. Believe his capacity. Oh, I like to raise and define as both of your hands. Tell God Almighty, tell him, I believe your capacity, Almighty God. Now listen, let's be willing to trade our temporal for his permanence. All we have, everything that comes from us are always, or is always, temporal. Your money, temporal. But when the Lord blesses you, they always are permanent. You building a house? Oh, that house is temporal. But when God gives you a house, oh, that house is permanent. You're trying to start a business, it just what cannot succeed. Why? Because you're trying on your heart, you're trying on your best, it's temporal. The Lord gives you one, business continues, and business, you know, bless. Why? Because it's God who gives. Oh, it's you deciding because his mom is so pleased by the grass, it comes to me. You fail, or one failed, why? Because yours is temporal. You waited for God, and God gave you. And who God gave you? Praise be to the living God, is the best, and they are permanent. Amen? Amen. Now, I'd like to bring you uh, to a couple of examples. The rich young man in the gospel versus the widow in the city of Sarepha. Their permanence, or once, or rather, the former's temporal and the later's permanence. There was this young rich man who went to Jesus. He said, Lord, I want to enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus provided it. Do this and do that. Oh, I already fulfilled, complied it. And Jesus smiled back and told the man, young man, you still need lack one thing. Go home, sell all you have. You are temporal. Sell all you have. He was unwilling. He embraced his temporal and he was lost. Nowhere to be found in the Bible. God still wanted to preserve him. He didn't want 
him to be restored into the history of the gospel. That's why his name was not written like Benjamin or like Paul. No, his name remained to be without a face. Now the woman at Sarepa, Elijah went to the city and told the, told the woman, make me bake me a cake. And the woman, though, for a while hesitated, but later on, bake a cake for the prophet. And the prophet was standing now. And the Bible, the Bible story told us that uh, all what the woman had was just a handful of, a handful of flour and a cruise of oil. And what happened next was this. He thought that she lost already the handful of flour and the cruise of oil gone depleted, but she went back to the container and to her surprise, everything was in there. And they were sustained for a three and a half years of famine. You know what is famine? Famine, you one may have all of the money, all of the gold and the silver, but there are no resources. Famine is a kind of a starvation where uh, it's, a, it's, a product, it's a product of a circumstance. But despite people around may have, may have the abilities to acquire or to buy, but they're, they're just no supply. They're just no supply. There, the demand so high, but supply is not. Supply is absent. So that was stunning. And the whole of the three and a half years, they were living in the miraculous. You know what? We, we are willing to trade our temporal for the permanence of God. You live in God's abundance. Amen. Let's give him a lot of praise. Amen. And the last is this. God directs where we go and what to do. When we trust him, he shall and can know to direct you, to direct you where to go and what to do. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, as we trust for the best of God and believe His capacity, let's also trust and believe to the limitless capacity of God that God knows how to direct us. The Lord knows how to lead us exactly, exactly precisely to where we wanted to go and to what we wanted to do. Ladies and gentlemen, as I'm closing, your God, your provider, Take the man's out. You receive it today? Amen? Amen. Let's give a clap of praise.